Lucia. Um, my pronouns are they, them, or I know it's a little hard to see me up here, uh, but if, if you're having trouble discerning it, I'll tell you my general aesthetic and energy is a uh, 14-year-old twink attending a speech and debate tournament. <laughs> Thank you. So, lock in, strap that, strap that bad boy in. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's surprising to no one. I'm a big nerd. I, uh, I love D&D, &D, strategy board games, fantasy. Anything fantasy, I'm there. Uh, lately, I've actually been reading a great fantasy novel. Uh, it's a little, bit, a little bit dense, a bit hard to get through, but I think it's a real staple of the genre. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it. It's a little bit obscure. Uh, it's called The Bible. <laughs> the Holy Bible. Yeah. Okay, before I go for are there, are there any questions in the crowd tonight? Hell oh, yeah. Yeah, applaud. That's right. It's your month. Be proud. <laughs> Christian Awareness Month. <laughs> no, but, but really, like, I, I'm really not trying to defile your holy book. I swear. Like, I, I'm enjoying it, you know? I'm a big fantasy fan, and on paper, this thing is, it's checking all my boxes. Uh, first and foremost, you got uh, way too many characters to remember. <laughs> this thing's 10,000 pages, has 8 million characters. It's like God took notes from George R. R. Martin. It's crazy. Um, and, and then, of course, uh, you got uh, completely unpronounceable names. You know, you got your favorite characters, Gandalf, Dumbledore, and other books. In the Bible, you got Methuselah. <laughs> Try to spell that in your head. What letter do you think that ends with? H. Why is it an H? It's full of that shit, man. But I think the best part of any great fantasy novel, the key component, this is where the Bible really hits its stride, um, is that not a single female character matters. <laughs> This is crucial. <laughs> and look, look, I know a lot of Christians, a lot of theologians would disagree with me. They say, hey, hey, there's a lot of strong women in the Bible. And you know what I am? I am really reading it. And uh, I have come across a few uh, token girl bosses, if you will. But I don't have time to talk about all six of them. <laughs> of the eight million characters. Uh, so I'll just talk about my favorite one. Uh, everybody knows her, everybody loves her. She's God's favorite MILF. <laughs> it's Christmas time. I feel like I'd be remiss not to speak of her. Um, yeah, that's right, I'm talking about the, uh, the virgin. Mary. Look, I know it's a little bit played out to suggest that maybe the Virgin Mary wasn't so virginal after all. I get it, it's been done. But, uh, I think we're coming at this from the wrong angle, guys. I think, uh, the Virgin Mary deserves a lot more credit than, than she's gotten. You know, I might not think she performed a miracle by conceiving our Lord and Savior without ever touching a wing. <laughs> Personally, I don't think that's true. But I do think she performed a way cooler miracle by um, convincing everyone she knew that she never cheated on Joseph. <laughs> Baller. Slay queen. <laughs> really cool though, if you think about it. I mean, can you imagine the storytelling prowess, the boldness, the sheer panache that it would take to convince every Israelite in your village that you were impregnated by God? <laughs> Mary was really out here like, no, no. I wasn't fucking Jesus Sr. across the street in Nazareth. Not me. My baby daddy is the Lord himself. Yahweh. Looked down from the heavens above and he said, that is the hottest 13 year old I have ever seen. put my divine seed in her for the first and last time in human history. <laughs> Tap that. Um, <laughs> Tis the season, folks. 
<laughs> I will say it's not a feminist book, but it is still uh, marginally less misogynistic than Dune. So, still a hard-hitting movie reference. Thank you. Uh, I've been Emery. Have a good night. Woo!